Wow, what a series. To see that out just now, that game five, a hell of a cast, hell of a game. And uh, well played to Jove, I guess. And well played to Von Aston too. Yeah, I actually, we couldn't call who was going to be third place. They gave it their absolute all. Um, you know, feel, feel bad for Von Aston. Uh, bringing us a Vet 5 Tiger. That Vet uh, 3 T70, though. Yeah, that won the game for Jove. That was a, a huge, a huge unit. But uh, two very, very good players. Amazing show. Now we move on to the grand finals, and we see two seemingly like the best players uh, on form ever, I think. Uh, Nagano has just like aced you know, all his games across, across all his series. Same with Love Nest. Unstoppable. And they're about to meet head to head. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Quick uh, quick thanks to Ed. 80 Hertz, he, he, we have to do a quick transition into this one because we've got Twitch front page and the one is on the grand finals. Can't blame <laughs> them. Uh, big thanks to Ed. Everybody give him uh, some thanks in chat for this excellent casting five games in a row. Without further ado, it's time to get it on in the grand final. Nagano is a man that simply will not be denied. You may be the Bureau of Foreign Affairs and traveling overseas. You may stop him going to two previous World Championship finals. But in the first official World Championship final, Nagano is now fighting for the chance for ultimate victory and 20, the best part of $20,000, a £10,000 first prize. That's right, and uh, Love Nest, who has been a dominant force as well across this tournament, series after series after series of onslaught. We've got to phrase it that way. It's been onslaught. Uh, he is also going to be trying to claim and retain his amazing tournament credibility in this scene. Uh, Love Nest, of course, going to be playing Soviets. Oh, from GMCT, the side. baby. This is one of the most dependable com uh, commanders of all time. We've got a lot of new viewers here. Let's just look at the synergies of this commander. We're, we're weary of it. We've seen it for years. But uh, for new people, Love Nest plays this one and plays the overlapping roles of this commander extremely well. I think this is a commander that if Nagano decides to play the very popular OKW Grand Offensive Doctrine could be the counter. It has the marked target. You've got the guards with the button vehicle to slow them down a little bit. You've got that mobile offensive nature of the T-3485s. It's a beautiful commander. Um, we'll see what Nagano picks. Uh, he's not going to go for that instant pick though. No, he's not. He's going to bide his time before choosing Grand Defense Doctrine. It is Longress. <laughs> it is Longress, though, Dan. And this map has always bred slightly different approaches because it's so expansive, so wide open. The sight lines are much larger and wider, and there's a lot less sight blockers other than that central hedge. There's the map in its uh, eagle-eyed satellite view. As you can see, the tentative movements of those early units as they start to feel each other out. It okay. is but the first round. It's very timid uh, at the start. It's very it much, uh, no one wants Ooh, to make touch any... Me, you know. <laughs> uh, running around the playground, just playing tag here. But it will develop into a full-scale, brutal warfare where both players try and destroy one another to win $10,000. Correct myself earlier, I said pounds. But... <laughs> <laughs> Loveness, by the way. Having captured fuel on his uh, right-hand side of the map, he's now going for an early decap uh, of Nagano's fuel. Nagano rushing through the center. If he does manage to take this strategic point, he'll cut Love Nest off from all resources on the right. It's a popular move uh, from the south spawn to play at the start of the game. Oh, it's very popular. This is the longest pin attempt coming from Nagano, but he's a Co-1 veteran. He knows it well. He's forced one conscript off. He's got another first grenadier coming to the side. Excellent Rock 9 flame for a pop from that combat engineer licking molten hatred from the garrison. Seems like he's defended his position for now. Has Love Nest. That's a crucial defense. Nagano is uh, making sure that Loveness doesn't get double fuel here by decapping, laying a lovely mine along the retreat path that I'm pretty sure these conscripts are going to take. Mine's also in the cover position. Smart play from Nagano. Very smart. That's like a... 
It's like the division symbol in mathematics now. Mine, sandbag wall, and another mine. And that's a very lovely, uh, that's a cut-off defensive mine. CDM from Love Nest. Really nice. Uh, very important mine, actually. Uh, Could really want to make sure that uh, any units coming over there don't get that decap. Well, what will probably end up happening is they usually approach from the left or right on the decap, but when you get forced away, you're then going to be on low health, and you probably hit that mine on the way back to base, and uh, that's when it'll prove useful. Here comes the flamethrower squad. Oh, a bit missed there. <laughs> it's like a drunken man urinating everywhere there. He's started left, and he... Gradually got his way towards the folks grenadier. There's that mine. There's another one on the retreat path. Don't forget. Or did no, they both no, detonate? Both mines went <laughs> off there. Uh, so only two models remaining. Loveness got to be careful here as the stern pioneers close in. Could be could be a squad wipe if Loveness doesn't notice. He does just in time. Engineers get away with the flamethrower. Conscripts versus folks grenadiers from their respective green covers. We may as well look away. Could this could go on for a very long time indeed. Green cover done. Hella good. And there's Nagano with a nice KD, but it is against Conscript, so uh, it's to be expected. Soviets uh, tend to have a negative KD when you play with the Conscripts just at the start, but uh, it does get better once you get those bigger vehicles out. Love Nest has been uh, doing some good work with mines, uh, and mines on the roads, which of course may catch ah. some of the lighter vehicles when they come up. But you can sweep the mine with a little bit of a metal detection there, and he sees them both, or well, one of them at least does Nagano. There is the other one that was probably just outside of detection. No, it's definitely not now. Yes. He's well and truly seen them. Spotted both. Very, very important. Love Nest going to be uh, unhappy that those have been spotted. Folks around here is on the capping duties. Nagano's doing well so far. Love Nest, it must be said, does not want to build anything else quite yet because later in the game he would fall into attritional issues on the manpower. You don't want to get too much infantry too early on. You want to try and stagger your way through it. And you will see on this commander he will get guards later. So he's waiting until he gets uh, the guards out, basically. Nice. Uh, Love Nest does not want to get triple capped. Just managed to force some Vols Grenadiers off of the right VP. And uh, along as Kyle, the, the VPs are quite close together on this map, I'd say, in comparison with some of the other maps that we've uh, seen today. Crossroads, Fangville. There we go. Sees the MG42. And, uh, yeah, well, the MG34, rather. This is, of course, OKW. I do miss a bit of their map play, and uh, maybe my mind was just trying to miss them a lot there. The Love Nest, of course, will be playing Axis next game, so we could be seeing that later on. Tankovi Battalion Command, all but completed now. So uh, T70 in due course. And we'll turn the fuel away. It's, uh, it's good timing, actually. He's going to hit 70 fuel and 270 manpower at the right time. He's, he's planned that well. Uh, no early guards, so uh, interesting. Nagano has gone for the mechanized regiment in base. He's already started building the Panzer II Lukes. It looks like it'll come out roughly the same time as the T70. Oh, he will be getting guards as soon as he has the manpower. They do cost uh, a little bit just to uh, 360, you know, and, and he has had a bit of attrition to some of his units. T70, though, he's got to prioritize that, of course, Dan. And you can understand why with the Luke's simultaneously building. The utilizing Love Nest's green cover sandbag to. And that is a sensible Love Nest has had to get the uh, oh. engineers out of there. Look at that switch. <laughs> Beautiful timing. The old bait and switch. Get the engineers. Burn the uh, Volksgrenadiers out of cover. <laughs> I wouldn't want to be the engineers in that case. Guys, could you get in the house instead? I've, I've been here for a while. But the house is on fire. No, nah, don't worry about it. Come on, get inside, lads. You can see uh, Love Nest. He's constantly merging the conscripts into the engineer squad. T-70 now coming in from the north, going to help to fend off the stern pioneers, but uh, Nagano is ganging up on Love Nest with the Vox Grenadiers on that side. What a battle from Nagano so far. He's played absolutely excellently, and the truth is in the victory point count for Love Nest. He's down to 357 and dropping away. T-70 just having a little bit of a foray into the east as the house is asunder. The loose. Uh, he knows those engineers are retreating and he's going in to see if he can get squad wipe. Oh, and he might just finish it off, but there is a little bit of green cover in the way. 
got to reload that cannon now. And there you go. He's going to hit the green cover from here on in. He's got away with that. Oh, just. just ow. I'll tell you what. I said he hit the green cover. He hit it about twice. <laughs> and then he carried on. Just uh, getting repaired now. Or, sorry, healed now as a stern pioneer. He's done the same thing as Bradman. Still, there's triple caps engaged. And Loveness usually tries to stay on the victory points. He's quite a victory point focused player. And uh, he won't be enjoying this. MG34 is in green cover, but the conscripts managed to get into green cover for the decap. Now we're seeing the center VP under duress as Loveness comes in with the engineers and the flamethrower. T17 go after the Panzer II. Luke's now, there is an 80, and I haven't seen any mines from Nagano uh, so far. And he wants deep in his territories, at least now. Um, Luke's on the east side, Conscripts chilling behind the sandbags. MG34 is pushed away very easily. Lovenest is on the resurgence. He's in the centre as well, pushing through that victory point. He doesn't care about the Luke's, he just wants the MG. In the centre, I think he's pushed away a few units south of the victory point. No, the Furch Grandi is hold firm. He's also pushing west as well. We've got Lu Loveness pushing back on multiple fronts, sweeping mines. This is the pushback. He's had enough of bleeding victory points. Ah, there's another mine as well. Lovenest is the mine master. So much use of the time that he has. Guards have been called in for Lovenest now. And, uh, correct to say that's going to be the obvious choice. It's going to be one of the best counters to the mechanized regiment from OKW. Also to the Puma that's about to hit the field. The T70 should be able to play a little bit more freely, knowing the Puma is soft countered by the PTRS anti-tank rifles of the Guards rifles. Not many skins on display, very vanilla, threat, fresh out of the factory, showing an urgency of battle down there, just rolling these things onto the field because this is the grand finals. 70s rear facing armor there, Puma. This is the first shot. Oh. So here's the power of the guards, great compliment to the T70. Anything just going to be annoying at uh, holding these light vehicles off from Nagano. French Grenadiers pushing in with us, Stern Pioneer Cousins, but uh, we've got another worker infantry unit pairing, hitting veterancy to two. Just heard a nice tripwire flare there as uh, the French Grenadiers are now four instead of five. That van is uh, helping the conscripts on their journey back to base, but they do hit negative cover and... Oh, there you go. That feels so sad. That represents the life of a soldier, Dan. It's a little flare <laughs> that goes into the sky and they go... <laughs> T 70s in a good position here. Just goes behind the cover, but then sees the Puma thanks to the conscript range and uh, reverses away. Just bear in mind, Stern Pioneers are on the left hand side of the map right now. Loveness has planted a lot of mines, so the Puma, it would be uh, very unwise of Nagano to chase after the T 70. Um, really good idea to slay mines everywhere. Just means the Stern Pioneers have got to be on the front lines, otherwise yeah. they can't make that ground with the light vehicles. Well, right now Nagano's chosen to back camp, which means we are going to, as you say, have a little bit of a stagnant passage of play because Nagano cannot push forward without them. T-70's using this garrison as cover. Very um, reminiscent of uh, the Semwar battles of old with M20s or M8s back in the day using the buildings and charging from behind them. Conscripts push forward. Do they have 18 names, possibly? They do. Eight eight from Loveness. There's healing and 18 nades from the HQ. Very good, very good. He's also got the Zis gun coming out. Conscripts march forward behind the haystack. And uh, yeah, we're now starting to settle into things. The biggest piece of damage so far, uh, Stormless, is the fact that Loveness has lost 210 victory points. Which is quite a lot, actually, uh, for the early game. Nagano has put emphasis on the VPs here, and uh, that will pay off. That's actually very brutal for allies to lose victory points. Well, the longer Longress continues, it becomes like a 2D plane, which really tests the player's long-range fighting capabilities, and it can become somewhat of a slugfest, so 200 victory points certainly will matter, as will that mine on a very, very favoursome road. These light vehicles only need to be caught off guard once. And uh, I'm sure the T70 is going to be able to go and finish off whichever unit does get snared by it. So much work needing to be done by the Stern Pioneers. Look, they're, they're also healing. healing. They're healing. They've got to be on the front lines for minesweeping oh. and they've been capping. 
just uh, working a hard life there, Dan. You've got the nursing job, you've got the cleaning job, you've got the killing Russians job. Stern pioneers have a tough existence, don't <laughs> they? <laughs> The cleaning was mine sweeping. I hope that analogy worked for most people. <laughs> Just to fully clarify, there are a multi skilled audience out there. Conscripts push forward with the T70 giving covering fire, but there is an MG waiting for them. Meanwhile, two first grenades on the west side push in. The Zisk gun enters the picture in the center. It's really starting to heat up. These first grenades are looking really low, but it's actually the Puma that's in more trouble. Gets out of there. Is there an overshot from the Zisk? Well out of range and actually ends up hitting the MG. Yeah, he's not going to take that. Thought maybe there's going to be a chance to shoot with a little bit of sight. There's a flank in the north though. Nagano comes round oh. with uh, three squads of Volksmanides. He's decided not to push it though. Mines, Perhaps, though, isn't it? Yeah. He saw those mines earlier on, and uh, Nagano's right now at the height of his power. He's uh, fully ready for this. He's been playing this game for nigh on a decade, in fact, probably a decade. So uh, there you go. Remembering that there are mines. It doesn't sound that impressive, but trust me, in the context it is. These conscripts are dying for their transgressions here, throwing the 18 aid and getting gunned down like the partisans they are. First squad wipe of the game, I believe, there. It's uh, in favor of Nagano. Not a bad loss, though. I think if you're going to lose anything, it's, uh, conscripts, not the worst. Oh, Tier four coming up for Love Nest. The Battle of the Wounded there on that road. Go back to that victory point. Look, the wounded are all meeting each other in combat. The Germans were crawling towards them. It's quite sad. Uh, they, for a moment on camera, they were both crawling towards each other like they were having a knife fight on their bellies. The SWS truck out. We all know where that's going. It's going straight to that cutoff to become a lovely sh Panzer headquarters with a flak come out. That's right. Nagano, by the way, still no commander pick. Uh, at this stage, so very comfortable doing what he's doing. Uh, he should know what Love Nest's pick is, so... How many kills on that T-70? Jesus Christ, nearly got a squad right. 17 kills, veteran T-2. Very good little light tank, that is. So M T-70, absolute MVP of that previous game. It was uh, spotting for Jove, spotting for the IL-2 Sturmovix, and causing all kinds of problems left all over the battlefield, quite frankly. Might see a similar tank this time for the non-Russian player, for the German, playing as the Russians, quite confusingly. I've got to say, there's just such incredible responses from both players every time uh, an engagement happens. It's almost like they're controlling all the units actually at the same time, which of course is not possible. It's the objective. You have to get as close as you can to that. That's the idea, I suppose. But it's more also about making the right decision rather than two not so good decisions and Loveness is the master of that his APM is rather low actually somewhere in the 40s and 50s uh, whereas other players can hit upwards of uh, 60 70 um, and Loveness isn't the highest APM player but he does make the right decisions at the right time Loveness is uh, currently building T-34 85 right now and uh, I think that'll do quite well on the field Yes, certainly. It's uh, not a bad uh, time slot for it. In fact, it's probably the atypical uh, time slot. T70 though, VET3, oh, proving its worth. First grenades don't stand a chance. And here is the T34 as it surveys that dusk landscape on Longras, entering the battlefield from the north. Let's just have a look at that new uh, atmospheric preset now for this map. It looks beautiful. If you tilt the camera down and look at the, uh, the outer world, look at that. It, this, I believe, was Wufia who uh, did this little bit of uh, map making work. Beautiful, isn't it? It's it like, is, uh, yeah. Okay. Shame you don't get to see more of uh, the map in this way. No. Happy little tree there. Yeah. This is our cloud. This is our battlefield. Obviously, Darton built from Nagano. Um, probably to counter some of the guards here. Really expecting to see the LMG 34 upgrade on that unit there. A fearsome anti infantry uh, squad. T 34 bossing the center. T 70 zipping around. Puma's giving it issues though. Conscripts taking advantage of greater cover. Puma with a nice shot. We see it. An Ura, but it is mitigated heavily. Decides against it basically. Folks, Grenadiers survive somehow. It's a very, uh, it's a very intense battlefield. There are skirmishes going on all over the map. 
Nagano bringing out some AT on the site of that T34, 85. And uh, always and you don't want to be leaving these out against uh, the T34 because uh, these are very expensive to reinforce. Nagano and Rakatenberth as name a more iconic duo. He can't quite move and cloak anymore, but he can still make great use of them. That extra five meters, or well, five game meters, will be very well utilized by Nagano on this long distance map. I'm really loving everything that we're seeing out of Love Nest at the moment. It's been a difficult game for him, actually. Yeah. I don't think uh, much has gone his way. Uh, but the actual decision-making has still been very good. Getting the T-34 out, making sure that he has... Oh. Um, <laughs> well, t 70s having driving issues. It must be a new crew. Yeah, and making sure that he's got that advantage uh, window before the, the late game potentially comes out. It's just... I've got a controversial opinion about Soviets. I actually consider them possibly the best late game faction at the elite level. I see so many endurance battles won by the Soviet player in these big tournaments only, pretty much. Mm. Nagano's a master of it, but Lovnest is the best at it. So the fact that he's had a wonky early game, thanks to OKW's power spike, TM, um, I actually feel that Lovnest could put himself in a position to start to control the later regions of the game. Let's see how much damage is done until that point. Nest. Oh, <laughs> that's not going to help. C70 down thanks to Raquette and Verfa from Nagano. Yeah, Love Nest going to be very careful there. He's trying to do the dance with the Puma. Uh, not sure where this is going. He's managed to turn the Raquette and has got to get out of there before a final shot is delivered. On the right VP, the conscripts are forced away. Nagano is just comfortably sitting on two VPs at any moment. Said those extra five meters of range would help Nagano, and they certainly did. C70 could not get out of there. Sidewinder like shot at the end. Coach is pushing. Ziskun wheels backwards. Luke's Imperius in the center. Oh, I tell you what, might get, might pay for its arrogance and blood. Oh, really unfortunate. One shot. Oh, the AT gun. What a it. shot! Hands to Luke's goes down. That is definitely worth the trade. The Puma, I think, values that it could get the T3485. Can Loveness get out? Oh, he was going to go for the merge there, but the Conscripts couldn't get there in time. We've just seen both light tanks die to max range AT gun shots. He's fighting for his life, he goes for it, he chances it in the heat of the smoke. Trying to wheel backwards now, but the DPS from these grouped OKW units is too damn strong. Gets the kill on the weapon. Yeah, that's uh, not the best idea against the Obazul Dart and Loveness currently back in the base healing. He's got Veteran C2 on one of his engineers, so advanced uh, repair speed times now. Nagano, still attention to detail on the mine sweeping. And I'm not taking that little piece of decision making from Loveness. It was the most touted facet of his game yesterday in the semi final. He didn't make a single bad decision, and we're seeing a few wonky ones so far. Mm. I don't think many of us would have urged him to, to cap that Zisk gun with a Obertal lot with an MG34 standing by. Mm. Uh, cracks in the stone. But uh, Lovenest is, uh, do you know what, one of the great things about Lovenest, he's one of those players, he does have a lot of tournament experience, so this won't be a, a knockback for him. Uh, he will be able to uh, pick himself up and get back on the field, which he is doing now. Waiting to see his next teching choice. Ask yourself, though. I mean, we know Loveness wants this, but Nagano will really, really want this. Loveness has actually won a World Championship caliber event before. Folks, is looking low, however. Folks, is he is... Get out of there, does the Raketten Verfer? It can't. It absolutely can't. And uh, this could be a very good pickup for for Love Nest if he goes for the Raketten. Uh, actually, it's. Oh. Tell you what, I was uh, thought it was a bit of stroke of bad luck that uh, Love Nest lost his disc and whilst Nagano kept the Raketten, but that certainly changed hands. Nice merge there on the guards, gonna keep that strong squad in. Hold as much in the front line time as he can. By the way, Lovenest has managed to uh, get Stone a triple Pioneer's kill. low as well, but the good stun grenade saves them. Triple cap as well. Did you just mention that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's just gone a triple cap. Mark target was put down on the Puma there. I think probably to keep it out of the engagement whilst the T3485 deals with some of the infantry. But yeah, actually having the triple cap is really important. Lovenest down below 200 VPs already. Uh, Nagano. Near enough 400. Loveness going to go for double fuel. That should accelerate his path into more T3485s. 
Rovers doing? This is a lot of uh, manpower to lose. There's 80. See ya. That's half a worker unit. Look what's that pile of bodies. This is horrendous. <laughs> this is the Battle of the Somme. Double cap still for Love Nest. He's, uh, Nagano's not catching him up quite yet, but he will do soon at that rate. Uh, honestly, two minutes ago, this entire map was red. And now you're just seeing it go blue again. That is the composure of Love Nest. That you're is why... Uh, invest in Love Nest, sell <laughs> shares in Nagano. I understand. <laughs> here's, the, here's the graph. Oh, Love Nest up, Nagano 1929 down. all over again. Just saw a body fly past the window. <laughs> Certainly not Superman, that's for certain. T-34 groups, Vosh Grenadiers. That could have been so much worse. That was a slightly different place on the button. Stone Pioneers put their frying pan in their pockets because the uh, flame throwers come in. Oh, nice Polish hammer maneuver there. A blob on retreat, stalling him, blocking him up. First Grenade is absolutely brutalizing that conscript squad. Two soldiers remain, one dies, and his friend also. It's costly. Stone it's Pioneers costly. turn to run the gauntlet, but they've got an easier time. Not if they jump in that garrison. Watch the garrison jump, perhaps. Does, doesn't do it. Okay. With the guard stone, it's going to put pressure on the boomer and allow the T3485 to uh, spend some time chasing after these Volks grenadiers. They are a little bit bunched. Waiting for that big hit. Does it come? There you go. This is now what we like to call the Soviet um, sphere of influence. We're behind the Iron Curtain because we're getting towards that late game era where I believe at the elite level it's it's easier to survive the endurance battle. OKW, Dan, they may have that veterancy, but they bleed a lot more. Seven-man squads kind of bleed, but it is but a trickle. Grand Offensive Doctrine was what? picked by Nagano. Can you believe it? What Grand is this doctrine? doctrine? SU-85 hype. I love me some Love Nest SU-85. Oh, yeah. It's a shame that the thing. T-70 is gone. But uh, nevertheless, he's going to have a lot. He's got two engineers. He's got uh, plenty of sight. It's very. It's not a tank. Well, it is a tank. I think the kind of military internet people have allowed you to now call a tank destroyer also a tank now. That's new for like 2018. <laughs> but SU-85 is one of my favourites. Tiger is such a, a rubbish tank. Nobody ever gets hyped for it. Oh wait, yes they do. This thing is a living legend. That's right. Look at that Panzerkampfwagen 6. Beautiful. We just saw it get uh, veterancy 5 in the ace game of the last series. It's an icon, isn't it? It's an icon of warfare. It is. So much so that when... Uh, oh, gosh, it's low. When uh, Western tankers in France saw a Panzer IV, it had a similar profile to the Tiger. They thought it was one. There was Tiger fear in France. Obersal dot and low. Very low indeed. No focus fire because there's nothing there quite yet because the Puma saved its bacon just north of that garrison there, keeping the T-34 at bay just long enough. That's even before the SU-85 arrives. And uh, love this, by the way. He's just had so much uh, prowess on the field now. He really, like, targeted the VPs. He's about to get a triple cap again. And... Uh, Gano just back in the base there. Veteran C3 on the Stern Pioneers. Increased repair speeds with the Mechanized Regiment Pioneers. So the Tiger's going to be on and off the field quickly. Yeah. I'm agreeing with chat somewhat. There has been a Tiger in almost every game so far. But that's because there's only one commander for OKW. There is so only one. True. Yeah, yeah that's true. Uh, so that but would be unfair me, to I'm say. I'm going to give the SU-85 the same amount of hype as I used to give the Tiger. For me now, the SU-85 is the rhombus of death. This thing, just look at that rectangle, Dan. Give me a sideways profile of the SU-85 if you can. That's that's a sandbag, but it's easily mistaken <laughs> for the SU-85. There it is. This thing the other is side. like a child drew a pyramid and then turned it into a tank. It's got an offset turret. The crew members probably have a terrible existence for the five minutes they're on the battlefield. But it, you know, it's a Kursk winning vehicle. Fantastic. Look at it, attack that house. Great work. Loveness. Trying to get rid of that house, I think, so he can uh, ground attack through to the Tiger. Shot nearly went through. But uh, it's just a bit of a stalemate here. Neither player wants to run towards each other. They've got to fight the long-range engagement. On the right, Maxim forced out of the house due to a great uh, incendiary grenade from the Vet 5 Volksgrenadier. A second T-34, 85 out in the field for Love Nest. I think he's got the better army. He has, he has now. 
Oh, God, down, though. I... What were you saying, Dan? <laughs> you were saying, I think he's about to have a slightly okay army, because the guards are now dead, but he's still got a slight tank mobility advantage kind of thing. Just needs this HA-85 to start working to get Veteracy 2 and 3. And it hasn't actually hit anything yet, so it's going to take a while. Apologise to everybody for Caster's curse what there. Why did you do that? I thought you liked Loveness. Ah, well, you know, it's, uh, we want the games. <laughs> I, do, I like Madonna as well, he's always been a solid G. He helps a lot with Joe's translation yesterday. <laughs> the referees uh, thank him for it, that's for certain. Loveness looks like he's gearing up for a frontal assault. He is indeed. We've got the SR-85 backing up two T-34s, just saw a bit of Tokyo Drift there. Graphs just show army value is roughly comparable. KD-wise, Nagano's eked ahead, but he is up against Conscript, so I would say Loveness has had better lethality pound for pound there. Only pound for pound. I think the only difference really is that Nagano's been giving ah! squad wipes. Loveness hasn't. Hasn't, no, he never gets a squad Loveness, wipe he down. never ever squad wipes. Ah! There we go. What was that? Oh, oh that was Typhus again. Balance it's, restored. It's rampant all over the all over <laughs> World War Two. It's amazing how we can just dictate this, really. Yeah. Just, I feel like I've just discovered I've got some super magic ability. You know what? I've never seen it come here, so we never will. A Kirov airship. It's never happened. <laughs> Kirov report. <laughs> well, this tiger couldn't possibly go down uh, at this stage <laughs> of the game. <laughs> oh, t I tell you what, these T-34s are gunning for it, though. The SU-85 is cutting off the retreat path. Puma's waiting. Will he see it and stop the push? He may just do that. That was an attempted push. That's just... A flexing of his muscles, saying, what could happen? Oh, oh, oh. This is really beginning to gear up. That's what I was saying about Loveness yesterday and, uh, and uh, Nagano. Both of these players know when to pull the trigger, and they know when to back off. I was wondering if they were going to snare the uh, SU-85 there. They don't, uh, even though they do have the munitions. T-3485 is going to come in and clear up the box when it is in the centre. Ooh, Puma's gaining veteran C4, Tiger's firing through the bushes, we've got Martog, however, on it, SU-85 is going to return fire, Wills had a Panzerfaust on one T-34, goes down, Tiger's in peril though, Dan, SU-85 could track it here, t 34 is going to come in, this is what I say, Loveness knows to pull the trigger now, Tiger's backed into the post, he has to manoeuvre around it. Is it worth a dive? It could have been. It could have been worth a dive. Oh, we might finish off that first ground here, could be a small amount of... <laughs> no, he just lost out in one regard there. T-34 pushes in a little bit. Oh, decides against it very much so. Well, it's 85, it's on focus. Uh, see what he can see then. Let's go and take that fog of war off. Very nice. Oh, he, he, he hits see it. it! He can, he see, can it. see it! It's oh, a he's got one more shot left in him. Oh. This is really tense stuff, Dan. I really feel like every action usually wouldn't be uh, worth this amount of cast casting hype, but this battle on this stage with this many viewers watching, it uh, feels like absolute on tenterhooks. We're standing on eggshells. It could go either way. Yeah, it's uh, still not a clear win for uh, for Loveness, though. Uh, Loveness, by the way, is now ahead in VPs of Nagano. We weren't sure that was going to happen, but uh, Loveness crazy attention to the VPs uh, has meant that Nagano finds himself on the back foot now. Yeah, he, he really started to push at the right moment. It's seen a true equalization. He rode out that OKW power spike and he's sitting not pretty, but he's definitely going toe to toe with his uh, Russian foe. These are uh, pretty key here to deal with the conscripts. They probably need a little bit more support. That is coming, of course, from the uh, Tiger. Vet4 Puma, and uh, in the build is a Panzer IV. Do you think it's going to be enough to deal with the... Uh... If it gets marked... Mark, oh, nice grenade there. Could have blanked for to uh, bump the grenade. Well, that could have been the Tiger as well. It's a combat engineer looking low. There's four watches on. Uh, tagging into the circle from the stern pioneers. That's uh, Nagano saying, "Ah crap! I have 112 victory points all of a sudden. I now need to use stern pioneers to cap in the face of a T-34." <laughs> oh my lord! No, he was trying to Faust. The model stood still. The crush went oh, in. Oh, and now he's angry. 
Tiger pushes in. Vet4 Puma also. T34 in peril. SU85, however, backs away. More target in. Veteran C2 now. Better penetration. More consistent. Tiger's in peril. You may think this is going well for Nagorno, but it could quickly turn sour. I think We've it's going to. It very much. Yep, as the other T34. There is! It's a big hit. It's not dead, though. <gasps> There How needs is to be a chase. Alive? It's on the minimum amount of health it could possibly there have. There you go. But abandoned! Abandoned ship, comrades! As the t commander jumps out and it's recruited instantly. Tiger still cannon active. Gets taken out by the SU-85. Zombie Tiger down. Panzer IV now is here. Takes out the T-34 in turn. It's all boiled over in a cauldron of destruction on Longras. It's crazy. Nagano has managed to get control of the VP, so he's still heavily in the game at the moment. Panzer IV needs to get out. We could see a snare on the SU-85. No, he's gone for the incendiary grenade. Got to push Loveness back into the base. Somehow, somehow Nagano is going to come out of that still fighting. But there were heavy losses on both sides. Severe casualties. The Raketan might come back in Nagano's control. Damn that SU-85, baby. Vet 3 on that thing. It suddenly goes from being, oh, he went for an SU-85 to, oh my god, it's an SU-85. <laughs> and that's what we're seeing. The Vet-5 Puma thinks it's a tank destroyer. Spoiler alert, you're actually an armoured car. The SU-85 actually does that function. <laughs> and it does it for a living. Wow. Well, it's funny because Nagano kind of needed to make that push to get back on top of the map control. He's got the map control but lost the Tiger. <laughs> and it's like, Targeting was that good? Was that not good? Uh, Let's check out the graph. Take into account the OKW uh, flak emplacement counting as army value. Uh, Love Nest is ahead, massively ahead right now. Well, massively. Look at this, that's so even on nearly every chart. Except he is ahead on uh, army value only. Yes. Uh, as we see, Love Nest um, going to dive on the VPs. I think he knows that's the, the, the biggest panic factor in the game right now. Uh, triple cap would really. Uh, trying to assess this, just looking at the veterancy, and uh, to be honest, yeah, you're right, it is very even. The SU-85 Vet 3 is the only thing separating them in my mind, because that really does damage, and it's doing damage to the Puma right now! Ooh, that was looking very tasty, and the T-34 is coming, could you see it in the distance, like Jaws? <laughs> the T-34 is going for the Puma! It went for it, and the Fudge Grand has blocked it, like the linebackers they are. Panzer fall rushes in, shot trap, misses, that could have been a wipe. There's a lot of risky plays going on actually. Um, I, I just think this is chaotic. I don't know that either player has control of what they're doing at the moment. It's just skirmish after skirmish <laughs> everywhere and anywhere. I'll fight you at any place, any time, let's just do something. Um, just oh. saw a poor user say, I come back from dinner, what happened? <laughs> it's been amazing <laughs> last 20 minutes of play. You chose incorrectly, good sir. T-34 misses with a whiff. Panzer falls a little bit out of position here with the SU-85 and the T-34. Um, could be pretty uh, pretty devastating. We just hear Nagano dropping down to 75 oh. VPs. He's desperate to decap. Desperate for anything because Love Nest is uh, riding out this game at the moment. He has double the victory points. The SU-85 hits the Puma in the face and forces it away. Conscripts for an aim shot. Nice. Work Conscripts versus Folks Ready. Bet 5 versus Bet 3. T-34 with its turret ring jammed. And Arno's not in the VP there. <laughs> I think he thought he was trying to get that decap. Bit of a waste. going to keep the camera like this for a little bit because of too much happening on Longris. Two long lines of sight now. We've got the SU-85 smashing everybody. Obersol Darton, fresh ones pushing in. You've got Vet 4 Obersol Darton. We have now got a vanilla T-34-85. Prime for a ramp, perhaps. Too much happening on Longris. What a battle it's been. We've got 37 minutes and counting of tremendous warfare. That Panzer IV, is the SU-85 taking it out? No, no, it's still there. It's still all right, is it? Yeah, just. The SU-85 is firing <laughs> something. Must be on attack round duty. Love this. Uh... Oh, this is creepy. <laughs> Folks going to do this, a little bit of hack and slasher action. Oh. I'm going to yeah. jump straight out, watch this. No, they don't. Okay, fine. No, I think good. Just trying to play do -si do waiting for the Vet-5 Puma to, uh, to come in. One hit from the Puma could result in a snare, which could be pretty good. 
Boomer is uh, trying to find that angle. Uh, <laughs> Volskin is going to be careful though. <laughs> Pretty good. I don't want to be a soldier in your platoon. Yes, yeah, going well. Keep up. Keep at it. Stay in the house. <laughs> Combat engineers do some good capping on the west here. Don't forget, uh, Nagano's victory point count continues to fall. It's going to be a triple cap coming in. Look at that! Yeah. Triple cap. This is important stuff. Those conscripts and combat engineers capping in unison. You've also got that Vet 2 MG getting into position. And Nagano sees the danger. All of his units are pushing straight back into the middle. We've got a big confrontation coming because Nagano has to throw in something right now. Nothing else that he can do here. This is look at the fire ah! power of the stern pioneers. Wiped one of the veteran C3 engineers. Engagement in the southeast as well. Victory point down here is under contention from Vet for Obersalvon. Every victory point matters right now. The meta has been turned on its head. Oh, Obersaldon, they get Vet 5, but uh, drop three of the models. The Puma's got to do so much work here. Panzer IV is still back in the base. Oh, the tanks are on the move as well. Love Nest, like a sharp smelling blood. Is, uh, or seeing an inexperienced swimmer fresh around in the shallow end. Oh, Puma's low. Panzer IV also. Love Nest is dominating the centre, he's using his tanks as a spearhead to recap the victory points and possibly finish off this game. Tank's about to die, but it's all in the name of Soviet supremacy. Nagano there, it's, uh, it's dicey, you know, actually trying to use the Puma when it's on such low health. This is great, Maxim's covering the uh, centre VP, Vet5 Sternpine, you need to be careful of the crush there. Indeed, that's a stolen MG34. The green cover is crucial. That's going to stop him getting suppressed and allow him to neutralize the victory point, keeping him in the game on 18 victory points only. Oh, this is so <gasps> tense. The, the Stone Pioneers just died in the sensor, though, because the sandbags got destroyed by the tank. The T34 destroyed the sandbags, allowing the MG34 to hit Vet 3 and polish off the squad. That could be game for Love Nest as the Panzer IV dies. Trying to reclaim the center. Love Nest is taking game one. Puma down also to the SU 85 and abandoned. That sandbag dying, Dan. That was the moment. <laughs> Nagano is uh, really running on nothing uh, at this point. What's he holding out for? What's the, the strategy at 18 VPs? Oh, the MG 34 is going to die. Not before it possibly kills the Obers, perhaps. No, it's going to repack. And uh, this victory point has been contended, so Love Nest Uras into it with two squads. Five, four Soldats and Veterancy Five Furch Grenadiers with the Nade, with the Sturmgewehrs. They're going to try and fight to keep Nagano in this game. <laughs> Still in the game. Oh, if he hadn't thrown those tanks, he may have had a chance, but we just know this game's over. Yeah. Chat's going crazy. Well, what a game one uh, in this series. Uh, <laughs> very, he's very. He's fighting still. He's still fighting. He's not going to win. I think that would be very, very surprising. But spicy. I admire him for it. I really do. I mean, what do you take out of this game as Nagano, really? Um, you know, you, where, uh, where did this go wrong? Fighting Love Nest Soviets on Longris, the way I'd take this is you cannot let up. Uh, you just have to keep your advantage. You can't allow him, after that 20 minute mark, to start to build strength. And uh, unfortunately for Nagano, it didn't quite go that way. As you see, the Obes will go on absolutely control alt deleted. Yeah. But uh, we did, I think it's fair to say, see some cracks from Love Nest. But uh, it is going to be Love Nest taking game one very confidently. GG. What a game one! That was the moment I wanted. I was salivating watching that fifth game, you and Ed cast, thinking, oh, this is awesome! I know. And then that one was like equally awesome. It was like Nagano and Loveness saw the incredible battle between Jove and uh, his opponent, Von Aston, and like, okay, 
we're, we're having wars, are we? Yeah. Let's have one yeah. of our own. Uh, Von Aston and Joe definitely set the tone, and uh, Love and Aston Nagano took it up a notch in a way that we weren't expecting. Uh, there is a lot to go on in this series. Uh, that was really hard to call. I don't know you could really say that any player was like over each other in that game. Nagano, I think, just lost out in that big engagement, didn't manage to come yeah. back from it. Um, it's just a really crazy game, good plays. Uh, both players just so on form. They're planting mines everywhere. They're drawing units to the right places. They're taking these like really big engagements and then utilizing that flanking around the back. Uh, it, it's it's good. This is top level company of heroes. It was fantastic. Uh, it was really fantastic. One thing that I, I, I had, hate to just I'm going to commend the player that won, obviously, and I've obviously cast a lot of love nest recently. So I sound like I'm beating a dead horse, but he's he's a seed number numero uno. The way I see that game is composition-wise. Nagano went for the same OKW composition. He's pretty much going for all in every game, but it was Longris, and Longris always demands a slightly different approach. The player that built the true tank destroyer and the long-range beast, the mm. SU-85, won. The player that did not build the Yag. Jagdpanzer and instead elected for the Puma like in every single game did not win and it's like it was a just complete counter for that yeah. the SU-85 ended up backing up and actually winning the game taking out the Tiger yeah. and swung that engagement it is true like the weakness of this OKW build is is range and penetration I mean yeah. the Tiger is a slow tank at least with the Command Panther there's a bit of yes. speed on it and a bit uh, more range as well yeah. uh, or at least it can tank the damage before it gets that final shot in the Puma cannot do that yeah. So uh, the way I see this is Nagano was too rigid in his build and it wasn't longer as appropriate. And maybe that gave Love Ness the edge he felt. He had a sh You were right. He did have cracks at the start. But then he was like, okay, I'm Soviets on longer as I can do this. And he, and he just <laughs> oh, dominated. Oh, wait. I'm Love Nest. <laughs> oh, wait. Who am I? Exactly. It's so good if I woke up. Well, in one of my Ultimates games, is, hang on. I'm Love Nest. <laughs> <laughs> this is, uh, is fantastic. <laughs> uh, it's a, a cracking game. I'm uh, really looking forward to seeing what game two uh, brings. Two incredible players. Uh, I, one of the reasons why this is such a big series, we talk about this in some of the other series, was just that we haven't been able to see Nagano at some of the bigger events, just due to reasons of travel. Uh, him being from Russia, not always been able to get the uh, the, the visa for it. So you know, we missed we missed this potential finals in some of the other tournaments. And uh, Nagano is just turning up to this. It, it, it's like his real time to uh, to kind of put his name up there. It's been deserved. He's deserved this final for a long time. He has. He really has. Yeah. Yeah. He was an honorary kind of de facto finalist of Warpaint never got to play in the GCS tournaments unfortunately and he did we did try uh, we actually met Nagano and I he's one of the first people I told four minutes till the game is live by the way if in case you're wondering about your beverage consumption if you can time it well enough um Nagano and I, uh, with GCS2, we planned in advance. We even contacted the embassies. We got to that stage. Mm. Like, full paperwork and everything. Just couldn't get him over. Mm. So it's not for want of trying. This is Nagano's deserved final finals. So uh, expect nothing less than his utmost best as he tackles Love Nest. And uh, we're loading into it. Game two very soon. That's right. And, uh, you know, I've got to say, I... Uh just to talk a little bit about OKW at the moment and this commitment to ground offensive doctrine. It is a, like a new commander. It's a good commander. But the fact that everyone's playing it, it kind of means that the counters are known. Do you know what I mean? It's it's kind of obvious from the start. That's another thing with the SU-85. I hate to keep on about this bloody SU-85, but a Tiger on a long-range situation is the perfect thing to make so an SU-85 veteran C3. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm huge, I'm big, you can see me from a mile away. Yeah, and funnily enough, it did actually have a target above its head for most of that game. With That's the my future target. if I keep eating McDonald's, by the way. <laughs> I, I really want to drink this coffee, and I can see that this game is loading. So can we please? You'll get a thirty-second stinger, uh, 30 before second we stinger before we load in. You are a brutal taskmaster, aren't um, you? You really are. <laughs> to, the, the fans have games that they want to watch, and uh, uh. we have to provide that entertainment. Um, Two and a half minutes till this game too. In fact, hey, sorry, let me just. No, absolutely, uh, absolutely. You can see plenty of amazing people in chat. By the way, um, you're all much loved, moi, moi, to you all, and uh, so many names and faces that uh, we've seen watching this incredible competitive game series for all.